What's going on guys? SmartHelping.com here. We're going to give away a free template. I uh, just built this here. And it's just about how you would do a weighted average uh, scoring or rating um, system. Now this could be done for employees. It could be done for uh, your clients. It, basically anything that has some kind of data that goes along with it that you want to try to rank, uh, you can do. And you can also, this is going to allow you to give a, a weight of 1 to 10 to each of the data points that you're measuring. In case you think one should be um, valued more than the other. So this is just a really simple uh, simple use case here, but this could be, there's literally millions of ways of things you can do with this, but I'm just doing um, ranking employees based on a couple of data points. So, you know, I thought some important things that you could measure for performance would be, you know, days late. Uh, as I say, it's a sales um, staff. You want to measure days late, uh, if that's applicable, sales close, total sales for the year. Uh, tenure possibly, citations, uh, new clients. There's a, a whole bunch of a plethora of different things you could measure for them. But the key is if you did implement this, that you are, you know, providing uh, performance feedback and you're giving some grade and you could say, you know, you know, here's the terms, here's what you got to do to get a certain grade. And if your grade is lower than this, you know, A, B, C, or D, or F, um, certain things happen. Uh, so this is just how I've just put together the, the logic so at least all the math makes sense and you just can kind of see how it works. Um, now, again, to download this, the, the link, this Google Sheet link will be in the description. And then what you'll do is to have your own version, you just go to file and make a copy. And then you've got it. You can do whatever you want. So here we've done is we've ranked each category from 1 to 10. And I have assigned scores to each data point. So, for example, we've got days late here. We've got a days late table. If you're late from 0 to 10 days, you get a score of 10. If you're late 10 to 20 days, 8. 20 to 30 days, 6. 30 to 40 days, 4. 40 to 50 days, 2. And over 50 days is a rank of 1. Obviously, the goal here, the scoring algorithm is doing um, the best score win. So, and it's it's the score. And to make things kind of apples to apples, I made sure every score on these tables goes from 0 to 10 in some degree. So the max you can ever get is 10. Obviously, the minimum could be 1 or 0. But it makes it so that... Uh, your results in the end are, are um, comparable. So you can see with sales closed, we've done, you know, and these could be arbitrary. You could put in whatever makes sense for your situation, but just 0 to 10 sales is a 1. If you get over 50, you get a score of 10. So obviously 50 or more is your target if you're a salesman. Uh, then total sales uh, dollars, there's another score, tenure, citations, and new clients. So and you could have as many of these tables as you needed, then go down further. You don't just have to have, you know, this many spaces. All that's arbitrary. It's no problem to build logic for. Uh, so you basically, this is your raw data. This could just flow here. Um, it could be for as many employees as you want. It could be for thousands of different, uh, say, clients that you wanted to score or how, what have you. Um, here we've obviously ranked total sales with the highest weight. So whatever the score is for total sales is going to carry more weight than your score for tenure or days late. Uh, citations is also ranked high. Um, so that's how that works. And then we've got our ratings. So this is just doing a VLOOKUP on each data point. So you can see it's just looking up for total sales here. It's looking up data D4. So data D4 is for Jill. Looking up 250,000. In this, you can see 200 to 500 would be a score of 7, so they sh Jill should have a score of 7 there, and you can see that is a 7. If we were to change that to, say, 45,000, it should drop to a 4. You see here, we put the 45,000. And there, it just dropped to a 4. I'm going to undo that. So... 
all of these scores, obviously the max is, uh, well, don't worry about the max min. So all these scores are going to be populated for each data point for each person. And then we're taking a weighted average. So we just do, to do a weighted average, you're simply taking the sum product of um, all of these scores, because we want to get an average of whatever these are. So instead of just taking a simple average and just saying, okay, here, what's the average of these numbers? We want to actually wait. So let's say if there was a max score of 10 on every single one, but one of them had a weight of 10 and one of them had a weight of one, then your score, your final score would not be 10. It'd be less than 10 uh, because one of them's weighted less. So what we do is this formula is just some product of all of these divided by, or and then the second array is going to be your data point. So it will be not your data points, but your weights. So this is what you're measuring every single average against. So you take, add up all of these, multiply them by all of these, and then you're actually going to divide by this. And that basically gives you kind of a allocate, or a, a, um, that kind of gives you a pro red allocation based on these weights and adjust these scores accordingly. So, here you can see there's the weighted ever score. And the reason, now you can see why you have to really go from 0 to 10, because if you don't, then your numbers, you don't know what a 9 means. If, you know, here we've gone 1 to 10, so we know somewhere around 1 to 3 or 4 is, is bad, 4 to 7 is okay, and 7 to 10 is on the good, is good. So you have that reference there. So whatever um, score you use from zero to whatever number, you just need to make sure you, you use similar increments and the similar um, min and max on every single one, or else it won't make sense. All right, so we've got our weighted average score for each person. Now what are we going to do is we're going to actually assign a value to each score. So we've put here, okay, anything below um, six, is a F, anything from six uh, below seven is a D, below eight is a C, below nine is a B, and over nine is an A. So that's the typical scoring you see in school. Um, and there's the scores A, C, and F. So John's got the best, then Jill, then Tim. And so now, hey, you can now put together quantitative data. You can you say, here, all right, here's what the weights are gonna be for all these data points. Here's going to be the scoring of each data point. Here's your 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 actual scores based on those tables. Here's the weighted average of all of them. So you're basically condensing all this into one score based on these weights. And here's your score. And based on that score, here's your grade. Now what you can do is say, well, if you get above a B, you get a bonus. If you get a C... You get no bonus if you get an F, you know, you got 90 days to f raise your score or improve your numbers. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you could also just assign, you could say, okay, uh, you know, an A gets, you know, a $2,000 bonus, a B gets a, a $1,700 bonus, and just do it based on just giving a bonus to each grade letter. Um the point is you're comparing uh, different data points and these could be non-numerical uh, and they could just be qualitative and then you have a scale that says um, different qualitative data points you know you can put a drop down here it could be five different things that are possibly chosen and each one has a different score of one to ten um, and and you come up with your, your grade that way. So it doesn't have to be a, a number that you're testing for. And I guess, uh, I don't want to mess up the formula. Let's do, I mean, we could add that. I don't want to do it now, but just for the point of uh, conversation, the way you do it is um, this would be a drop down of say 10 different things, or, or it could be three different things. And you could assign um, a point value to each thing so that when this looks up the item, it looks up the item on the list 
returns a value that's assigned to it in the table, and then that's your value. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Um, I mean, I guess if you wanted to, we could also do a chart. And nice thing about Google Sheets, Sheets is you can actually put the chart to have a uh, data range that's long. So we could put, the, say, 100 rows down, and it will only populate the parts with data, which is Excel will not do that. It will show, like if you did this, it would show a chart going all the way out to all these blanks and squish all this data in, which is frustrating. But here, you can see it only shows three people. If I were to add, say, a person here. Oh, that messes up my other two formulas. But if if we were to add, let's say, another person here. Drag our formulas down. It's basically the same data as above because I just dragged it. And drag this down. You can see there, BB just added. So I didn't have to do anything to the chart and it updated. And then we could put a name here. <coughs> um, employee grades. Or salesman grades and then we don't need a legend and we could definitely put uh, data points here because there's not that many data labels and there we have it so that chart we could make it a little smaller so you can see grid lines and there you have it so that's a weighted average scoring algorithm a million different ways you could set it up but that's just kind of the basic logic for how you would have if you have some kind of a data set and you want to rank these in some kind of fashion that makes sense all right well that's all I got for you today it's free. You can go ahead and download it and play with it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. This is smarthelping.com. Oh, before I forget, also, if you want, I do have other financial models. You can go to smarthelping.com. Here's a list of them all. I have some Google Sheet ones. I have industry-specific models. A lot of these are financial models. There are some general logic uh, flows that are built as well with, some pro or, uh, with scripts. Um, but most of them are just... Uh, nice clean uh, models to to forecast things out into the future and help you plan out different things there's all kinds here and all these are very different and have different logic uh, setups all right oh and if I don't forget I also charge an hourly fee if you want me for any consulting work $125 an hour and it scales down with more hours uh, there's discounts built in there all right have a great day.